6 o'clock, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, call the uh, City Council regular meeting for Granbury, Texas. Uh, and I, I really wanted them to come up closer. <laughs> <laughs> 6 o'clock is Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. We are at Granbury City Hall, 116 West Bridge Street in Granbury, Texas, 76048. I do want to remind everybody that uh, www.granberry.org slash live, I guess I can back off, quit shouting now too, uh, is available to you if uh, you would like to uh, pick this up online, either uh, live or, or later. It is, uh, all of our meetings are recorded. Uh, with that, I'm going to ask uh, that uh, if you would uh, come up, introduce yourself, and give us the invocation, please, sir. As, yes, as, as if you have to introduce yourself, but go ahead. Okay, well, my name is Mike McMahon, pastor of Fellowship Church here in, in Hood County. Thank you, sir. And unaccustomed as I am to doing what I'm about to do, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Father, thank you for the way you love us. Thank you for the way you take care of us, you provide for us. You look after us. You give us joy, you give us peace, you give us love. And I pray all of those things, but above all tonight, I pray for wisdom for our city council. I pray that they will not let anything personal interfere with whatever decisions need to be made, but that they will seek you and honor you as you lead and direct. Because even though a lot of people might disagree, we are a special people and we have special future and I thank you for that in Jesus name amen amen Reverend McMahon thank you for that yes, thank you very much now if you will join me in the uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the United States flag and to the Texas flag I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Great words there in those pledges. Okay. We're going to move to uh, number four. It's a proclamation and presentation part of our uh, agenda. And I'm going to go to 4.1, and I'm going to ask that uh, Councilman Stephen Vale step up and, uh, and introduce this one. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, this agenda item here on the proclamation portion of our meeting tonight, uh, I've been thinking about this project for over years, the Great Granbury Cleanup, if you've got the agenda tonight. I'm sure everyone here sees trash in our city and our county uh, every day. Our plan is to really make a clean sweep on Saturday, April 22nd from 8 to 11. Uh, they'll be meeting down in, in Hewlett Park. Uh, it coincidentally, um, uh, Earth Day is that same day. And as we all know and drive around, the blue bonnets and flowers are all in bloom. And, and uh, we have plans at this point also to uh, put a program together for fall. When I was a kid growing up in Florida, uh, my dad would walk our dog at night and come home with an armload of trash and throw it away. So as the saying goes, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Uh, my wife and I walk our neighborhood almost every day and pick up trash. I attended a meeting in San Antonio last year where TxDOT talked about the uh, program here in Texas, which is Don't Mess With Texas Campaign. Uh, they're very helpful uh, with information, access to supplies to help us with this project and event. Uh, we've spoken to the city of Crowley, uh, who have already started this program some years ago, and they do a, a cleanup uh, program in both spring and fall. Uh, I want to thank Chris and the staff for embracing the idea and, and the initiative. Uh, and I also want to thank Aaron and the Parks Department, Aaron. Uh, you do such an excellent job keeping our parks really clean. So I know when you come over that bridge over the lake on 377 going into town, uh, that area looks always fantastic. So thank you for that. Uh, as most of you know, we're a designated scenic city. 
Uh, we certainly want our residents and the guests that come into Granbury every day to be proud of our proud of our city. Um, I belong to the Granbury Rotary Club, and I will be the team leader for the Rotary Club. And as of last Thursday, we have almost two dozen people signed up with Rotary uh, to form our team with the Rotary uh, Group. Uh, we have a lot of other organizations uh, in town. Some are represented here in this room, and I urge you to put a team together and, and participate. Uh, so I hope you'll sign up and go out, and we'll pick it all up together. So this time, I'll turn it over to Chris. Chris has a few more details on it, and I know this information is out on the city website. Uh, it's gone out in, the, in uh, everybody's water bill, so the communication from the city has been absolutely terrific. Chris? Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, this is a good example of uh, being able to spend time together and visiting uh, on our way to that mid-winter mid conference with TML. Uh, we, we, this subject came up and we just got on the phone just kind of tell you how things work. Is I got on the phone and I called Michael Ross and I said, hey, let's, let's talk about a clean update for the city to join together and get various groups in town, nonprofit organizations and civic clubs to get together to have fun. and and make it a fun event and we talked about doing it uh, and before long he's reaching out to Cherie that's been very instrumental in the, the the campaign that happened last Saturday so what I thought I'd do is just have Cherie Westland come up and tell us a little bit about what's what's planned for April 22nd if you would kind of impromptu but she's here knows about it so she's been the, kind of the spark plug behind the organization to get it rolling and our uh, it's pretty cool that the advertising team pulled together, our communication team, uh, the city secretary, and er, er, the team just pulled together to put this event together on such short notice. And we are wanting to create a Keep Texas Beautiful committee here in Granbury. And it'll be, a, our dream for it would be a standalone nonprofit organization that's, that the, the dues can be funded by the city, but we would like for a group of, of citizens that care about this with intensity to, to join together and we're kind of making a plea for y'all to do that. Watching on the TV or here tonight, know that our that our heart is to keep our community clean, free of litter. And I'll turn it over to Sharif to tell us about the, the, the event and how it's going to flow. And also what you did Saturday and how you started last year with it. The, sh the shred? Oh, that's actually coming up. It's oh. the same day. So um, the same day as Shred It, um, it's a Shred It First is a donation for the fire department, and we started that last year when the fires were so bad. So we were trying to find a way to support the firefighters as well as uh, the shredding event. That was something that was brought to us so they can, anybody can uh, bring boxes of shred items and have donations for the fire department, which is the same day there at Hewlett Park, which is where we'll be. So in Hewlett Park um, at 8 a.m. on Saturday, April 22nd, um, you can come for some refreshments and some motivation and whatnot to get started, and you'll uh, be given grabbers. We have enough of those grabbers, so you don't have to bend down, as well as um, be safe with um, potential varmints and whatnot <coughs> that might be there. Um, and we have vests that will are very highly uh, visible vests and whatnot, and we'll give you all the supplies that you need to come out and pick up trash that day. Um, but before that, you can go to granbury.org slash cleanup. Uh, that's the redirect, granbury.org slash cleanup, and you can sign up for that, as well as if you're unable to attend or if you are able to attend, give us areas of suggestion, which is just as important as if you come and help us, because uh, although we have spoken to code enforcement, which are a great instrumental in getting good areas as well as the parks department you guys know more than anybody else those areas that are out there so let us know those areas um, and we will deploy all the teams so april 22nd starting at eight and then you'll go to your specific location uh, clean up for just two hours it seems like a minimal but if everybody chips in it will be a great um, or time and then parks department is amazing and they're going to come and pick up the bags so you don't even have to haul them anywhere you just put them there and um, send a text message where they're at and that's it so it, it's pretty simple as far as that goes and that'll be April 22nd and if somebody wants to adopt an area we can work on that too along the highway of adopt you know like your Civic Club wants to adopt a section of highway to keep the litter picked up I know I've done that with a Rotary Club in another community where we had a two-mile stretch as you're coming into town that we cleaned up once a month and we kept we had some pride doing that and we'd get lots of volunteers to help so 
Uh, that's also an opportunity that uh, will unfold as the, as the months go on with this event. We hope to do this at least once a year. So thank you, Cherie. Thank you. Now, Aaron will still have a job, right? Do what? Aaron will still have a job. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Oh, okay, good. Aaron's got a big job. Yes. It does a great job. Council, there are other uh, encouraging statements or uh, recognition that you'd like to have for staff? No one today? Oh, come on. Well, I will. Because I, uh, I'm going to comment on the uh, City of Granbury City Council's 88th legislative priorities. If you were here two weeks ago, you saw that we did put together a um, um, so a one pager that says here's what Granbury stands for as we go down and we start talking with the various legislators. Uh, thank you uh, for Chris for putting this together. Thank I remember Mr. Wadley, I'm Mr. M Mr. Vale, uh, Miss Reiner, and the whole group up here contributed to this. But this one pager came out, and uh, we were here Tuesday, and by Thursday, Miss Burwell and I were down at the uh, at at the state capitol and we had these in our hands and uh, we didn't leave with them in our hands we left them with our state legislature so they know <clears throat> what we are thinking and what we are standing for as a unified group and we've already started receiving calls about these and uh, wanting to know more we have some of these sitting out on the page back here this got turned around in about a day a day and a half and i came back in and i mentioned to chris how uh, proud I was to be able to carry it into uh, Austin and also proud of the group that put it together and I was specifically complimenting Mr. Uh, uh, Jeff Jeff over here and Jeff was uh, very quick to say oh no let me tell you who really helped it was Carla and Brianna they're the two that made this thing happen and that's the kind of people that we have here if good things happen but it's all about the team that makes it happen I appreciate it I really do appreciate it I'm I'm proud of it and like I said, this right here, if you uh, want to see what we're talking about with our congressmen or with our legislators uh, down at uh, Austin and in other places, uh, here it is. And give us your input. There's a little uh, QR code on here that uh, you can actually find out what all of the backup data is that uh, we're using to make these assumptions and make these statements. So thank you. So. I'm going to move to uh, public comments on agenda items for non-public hearing agenda items. Just so happens that all of the agenda items tonight are public hearing, other than the two on uh, the consent agenda, 6.1, the minutes, and 6.2, the uh, contract for global payments, which uh, saves us about $20,000 a year, and I believe we have an asset, or we have the... Uh, uh, ability now to take checks as well as that we will be we, we will, will be. when this is when this is implemented but does uh, council have any need to pull anything off or have any further discussion on these I see no one raising their hand so I'm gonna call for a motion to approve the consent agenda as is mr. mayor mr. Vale. make a motion to approve the consent agenda second Seconded by Mr. Wadley. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. I hear no nays. The consent agenda passes 6 and 0. Oh. Okay, we'll move right along to the deliberation agenda. We're going to start with 7.1. It's considered approving a request of 4905 GRH Development LLC to final plat at 36.798 acre tract of the W. Williams Survey Abstract number 574 as lots 1 through 13, block 1, lots 1 through 9, block 2, and common area of the Modern Oaks Edition. The property is located on Glen Rose Highway State Highway 144 south of Knob Hill Drive. So, Mr. Kaufman. You may recall this project. Uh, this is a renewal, basically, of uh, to get this project going again. They had a little pick up with the developer and change gears and so uh, Modern Oaks is back in the full swing and they're ready to move forward with a new final plat. Turn it over to Kara Wally, our Director of Community Development. Let her walk you through any changes or additions that need to be discussed. Thank you. So this plat is the same as, as was presented previously. 
Um, this slide shows the location of the site on uh, the 144 south of Knob Hill Drive. It's 36 acres, um, 22 single family lots, and this little picture of it from across the street. Um, Chris kind of summarized this history, so I won't go into that any further. Um, the preliminary plan was approved with certain variances, and the infrastructure and delivery of service impacts are that transportation access will be for, from State Highway 144 and from one lot having access on that to the south. Um, water lot will be provided, um, fire protection by, by truck, and there's a tank on the property as well. The drainage was approved, and the electrical is United Cooperative Service, and there's no need for a park. This is in the ATJ. This shows the final plat um, in the, the same form as, as prior, with the lots served by um, that one street with the connection there to the southeast. And the second page. Uh, Planning and Zoning Commission recommend approval <coughs> of the final plat by 5-0 unanimous vote on March 13th. And uh, these are your voting options for the plat. Do you have any questions? I'm going to go ahead and uh, go ahead and open the uh, public meeting at this point in time. And I have uh, a couple of people that have signed up to speak on this. No, I do not. Go to 7.3. I have no one that's signed up. Does anybody want to speak on this? Okay. I'm going to go ahead and close the public meeting, public hearing part of this. And I ask council, do you, do you have other questions, comments? Okay, been here. All right, I'm going to call for a motion to uh, approve a request to 4905 GRH Development LLC to final plat a 36.798 acre tract of the W. Williams Survey Abstract Number 574. This lots one one this one through 13, Block One, lots one through nine, Block Two, and common area of the Modern Oaks Edition. The property is located on Glen Rose Highway, State Highway 144, south of Knob Hill Drive. I hear a motion. Mayor. Yes, so Mr. Moved. <coughs> so moved. Mr. Rodriguez makes a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Corgan makes a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. It passes 6 and 0. Oh. We'll move to uh, 7.2. <clears throat> Consider adopting ordinance number 23-29 approving a request to Vicki Nivens for a specific use permit to allow a short-term rental, residential unhosted in a residential 8400, an R8.4 zoning district. The property is addressed as 520 East Bridge Street. Mr. Coffin. Again, I'll turn this over to our Director of Planning, Ms. Wally. Thank you. And this is your location map. Um, the site is outlined in teal there on Bridge Street. This uh, shows the area of the surrounding properties, which are predominated by uh, single-family residential to the north and some to the east and west. Along Bridge Street, there are also other short-term rentals. And to the south is commercial retail uh, business and other businesses al that front along Bridge Street. This uh, applicant is requesting uh, a short-term rental unhosted with two bedrooms. And this is zoning map. So the yellow shows residential zoning um, on all areas in yellow. And the purple to the north is a PD, which is also based in residential district. And to the south is commercial zoning. This is a context map for other short-term rentals. Those are outlined in pink on the property or on the, the map, and your site is in the, the green hatch there. Um, this is the site plan for the, the project. The house is there towards the, the bottom um, on Bridge Street, and that dark uh, hatch area to the, the opposite side of Bridge Street is um, a pool, so the house is, is just outlined there towards the, the front of the property. There are two parking spaces required for this this project and those are provided at the front of the property with access off of bridge so that's in compliance um, this is the floor plan showing the use of all of the rooms in the structure um, with the two bedrooms so designated and a photograph of, of the site uh, the parking meets the standards for screening 
of the headlines. And these slides are the specific use permit criteria. Um, the, the use is generally compatible with the surrounding area, which has single family as well as short-term rentals. Um, are the activities requested uh, normally associated with requested use? And they are, based on the information provided. Is the nature of the use reasonable? The site is in the historic overlay area, which is designated by the city policy. And are other measures to secure the protect the public health, safety, and welfare? Um, the site provides two parking spaces and would be compatible in compliance with the other standards and conditions of the zoning ordinance. Um, and these are just the um, standards and conditions that go with the, the proposed use for a short-term rental. We've seen these before, and these are in the staff report. And they, they repeat some of the information I've already stated here. On March 2nd, uh, staff mailed out 21 public notices to property owners within 200 feet of, and on the municipal tax roll uh, within 200 feet of the subject property. We also published notice in the Hood County News as required. And when this report was uh, written, we had three letters um, in favor and one letter in opposition to the request. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval um, with these conditions, on a one-year term, uh, subject to the site plan and the floor plan, and that it be limited to not more than two bedrooms. The following three conditions are standard, that it be um, subject to the supplemental conditions, that the other city codes be applicable, and violation uh, statement as well. And staff had the same recommendations uh, of approval with the same conditions. And these are your voting uh, options as shown on the screen. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open the uh, public hearing on this. And I have uh, Mr. Peter Garland has signed up to speak. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Garland. Peter Garland. I live at 511 East Bridge Street. <clears throat> the um, 1988, I bought my house. It was for sale, of course, and two houses across the street were for sale at the same time. The two houses that were for sale and are owned by this applicant. One of them is no longer there. It was residential. It still is residential. There are seven, I count, I don't know how many are on the map, but I count seven from 438 East Bridge Street down to the end of Bridge Street. There are seven short-term rentals. We probably got two more coming from this applicant. Maybe not, but that's my guess. We also got one later tonight that we'll, you will be asked to approve. So by the time we get through, we will have 10 short-term rentals, virtually all in a row, in a single-family residential neighborhood. I don't think anybody on the council would stand for that. I don't, in a single-family residential. Now, Several of you live in gated communities, so you got the HOA to help you out. All I have is my neighbors, <clears throat> and they've been very helpful. I'm not against short-term rentals. I love them. I told P&Z that I went to a one in Austin just a few weeks ago and had a great time until I got evicted. Yeah. And you can watch the tape and see how I got evicted. But... Um, they're very nice, they're cute, but there's too many. And at some point, you gotta stop. You remember a few um, months ago, at the uh, Loop and Pearl Street, there were two convenience store applications on the agenda for the same meeting, and they both disappeared. But you wouldn't allow that many of the same businesses in a commercial area. So why are you allowing so many short-term rentals 
in a single family residential. Okay, here comes the good part that nobody expected. Vicki does a great job of managing the properties. I don't have any serious complaints. Sometimes there's too many cars parked in the driveway and on the street, but overall, there's just too darn many. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Garland. <coughs> Excuse me. Also have Ms. Amy Dwight speak. My name is Amy Dwight. I live at 405 Count Sally. I agree with everything Peter said. There's just too many. But I also have a specific issue with this particular one, and that is that the original SUP was issued three years ago, and it operated with a permit for one year, and then it's been operating without a permit for the last three years. We come up here, and we're concerned about the proliferation of SUPs and short-term rentals in our neighborhoods, and we're told to trust the process. What happened? How are we supposed to trust the process when a prominent business person in town can operate without the required permits for three years? Thank you, Ms. Dwight. Other comments on 7.2? Okay. I'm gonna close the public hearing. Do we have uh, comments from uh, council? No one? Just for the uh, for information, this is how the short-term rentals are being reviewed at the uh, in our capital, the state capital. This is a bill, House Bill Number Twenty Six Sixty Five, filed by Mr. Gates, and I won't read all of it. I'll just read the part that applies to the short-term rentals, and it says, "As except as provided by this chapter, a municipality or county may not." adopt or enforce a law that prohibits the use of property as a short-term rental, regulates the duration or frequency or use of a property as a short-term rental, or limits the number of occupants in a short-term rental property. So that tells you what we're up, I don't say up against, but this is what uh, we are up against, candidly. And this is the uh, kind of thing that is uh, this is one bill. I'm sure that there are many more down there that have some of the same type of language. We have to rely on the other side to uh, have, you know, the opposing language. Of, there's just too many in our historical uh, area. Other comments? I might just Comment? add that there's not a single bill that I'm aware of that is in conflict with those parameters as it relates to short-term rentals. Okay. Um, we do have a a laborious process in which to secure an SUP and a permit or a license to be able to operate a short-term rental and we are working hard through a transition of staff and bringing on new software to help us monitor and track those issues that are mentioned of concern the, the SUP is expiring we've got a couple others that we're dealing with as well that will be coming before this body soon that their SUP expired over a year ago and they're bringing to try to get back into compliance. Their existing SUP uh, short-term rentals. I might also add that the Supreme Court has ruled, I think it's the Supreme Court of Texas, has ruled that a short-term rental is not a commercial use in a residential neighborhood. And whether you agree with that or not, I think everybody in this room knows how I feel about it. But I'm just saying, whether you agree with that or not, that is the law of the land. So uh, we can't regulate them like we could two gas stations or two retail shops or two sandwich shops or anything like that. So we do have the ability to carefully uh, implement some of those conditional standards that we implement in our ordinance for now. And those regulations may go away by May 20th. We don't know. So uh, that's, that's what we're dealing with on a big picture. and. Uh, as we move forward, um, that bill also has some provisions that he read about uh, that, that allows an HOA to continue to protect a neighborhood, uh, to keep the, the residential 
the way it's designed by deed restrictions. And so, but they're dealing with cities and counties at this level. And uh, there's, there's a couple of bills that are even more detrimental to local control than that. So, you know, we do enjoy a little bit of control, being be able to have this on an agenda for consideration. Uh, should some of these bills pass, these, these short-term rentals are just going to occur. And we'll be uh, issuing license and registering them as a, uh, a short-term rental and collecting the hotel tax like we do now. And there won't be public hearings. There won't be public notice. They're, they're, they'll just happen. And that's statewide. One, one shoe fits all in that scenario. So um, anyway, that's the, the, the current state of the state in regard to short-term rentals. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be as neutral as possible. I know that I have my internal bias and know how I feel about short-term rentals being next door to me or my grandkids, but uh, I've expressed that from this seat many times. So uh, I'll just tell you that this is a, whether this bill passes or not, uh, or the another bill passes or not, I believe that staff is going to be reworking this bill, uh, our current ordinances, to make this a, a less tedious process for anybody looking to do that. So um, it, it really is a long drawn out process to get this SUP and, and it takes time and money and putting articles in the paper and sending out notices to everybody within 200 feet and, and it, doesn't, it does not compute. And, and so that's probably gonna be brought forward in the near future after the legislative session is over, we'll see where the dust settles and, and respond appropriately. But at the end of the day, we need people to be able to, to get along with each other. And like, like we just heard from one of our speakers, uh, Ms. Nivens is, is running a good operation. She's got things uh, going the right direction. We don't have nuisance complaints. We don't have noise complaints. Uh, we've, the police haven't experienced those complaints from any B&B in town. And we have very good compliance with our people in our community and people want to come here and visit and you know we want them to come here and visit and, and support our local businesses too so there's a, a need for another hotel we're working on that uh, so there'll be more hotel rooms for people to be able to stay in possibly two but for now we we're working on one and and that will change some dynamics but there are a simple fact that people like to rent houses and enjoy those facilities and amenities that they offer swimming pools or whatever they may have and they want to do that instead of staying at a hotel so that's the world we live in with technology has brought in a whole new industry and and even though we call it industry the supreme court of the state of texas has said it's residential use of a residential property and you can't you can't uh, stop it so you can regulate it you can put it in by zones and that's what we've done and that's what they told the city of arlington so we're trying to be as sensitive as we can to everybody in the community and we appreciate y'all coming and talking and, and I knew Mr. Garland's position before he got up and we've had these conversations on one on one and I encourage those. We have a friendly relationship. There's no adversary in this room with us. I hope we're all we're all get along at the end of the day. We walk together on the same sidewalks and go to the same festivals and have fun together. So uh, we're not here to be adversarial. We're just here to try to be ministerial in the way we operate and act on, on the requirements. So thank you. Ms. Burwell. Mayor. Um, I, the only other thing that I wanted to bring up was, I think it was Ms. Dwight, at the, I watched the PNZ meeting related to this particular SUP, and um, I think there was mention of the fact that we delayed this to a future date, and I just wanted to let you know that that was because of the legislation that is happening. We have not forgotten about this, about the density issue, among other things. This uh, House Bill 2665, if it passes, it's sitting in a committee right now waiting to be heard. And um, if this passes, as the mayor stated, we may not have control over much of anything with rel relation to short-term rentals in residential areas. So we've not forgotten about that study. Uh, we're just waiting to see what's gonna happen because it's probably gonna happen very quickly and then we can kind of go from there. So I just wanted to address that for you because I knew that you had mentioned that the other day. That was it. And I mentioned that uh, bill number 2665. I hope you wrote it down and uh, you talked to uh, the legislature, which is uh, where it is at this point in time. Other comments? No? Do I hear a motion to adopt ordinance number 
29 approving a request to Vicki Nivens for a specific use permit to allow short-term rental residential unhosted in a residential 8400 zoning district. The property is addressed as 520 East Bridge Street. Mr. Corgan? Make a motion to approve as presented. Mr. Corgan makes a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Rodriguez makes a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say nay. It passes 6 and 0. I'm going to move to 7.3. Consider adopting ordinance number 23-30 approving a request of Karen Hagler for a specific use permit to allow short-term rental STR residential unhosted residential unhosted in a residential 8400 zoning district. The property is addressed as 401 East Bridge Street. Mr. Kaufman. Here we go again, right? It's the same song, second verse tonight. So, Ms. Wally, I'll turn it over to you to go through the particulars. Thank you. So this um, particular ac application comes to City Council after a long uh, series of various public meetings that I'm just going to review those very quickly. It's a long list. But in summary, the, the applicant uh, purchased this property. It was in need of significant uh, renovation and upgrading and, and property maintenance. Um, it's located in the historic preservation overlay and needed to go through historic preservation commission multiple times in order to seek a, or gain approval of various improvements that, that the applicant was proposing. At a time um, in July of 22 when um, the applicant felt that they were completed with their HPC approvals. This went to Planning and Zoning Commission, who recommended denial of the SUP. However, prior to coming to City Council, the applicant withdrew that uh, request and um, then, then proceeded on at a later date um, applying for a new, a new application for an SUP for short-term rental. Um, the PNZ uh, held that back since there was a, a new application for historic preservation commission review. Um, and then the, the course went through preservation commission approval. Then on March 13, the P planning and zoning commission recommended approval of the, the application for the short term rental. And that's how we come to be here today. So there were a number of improvements already made on the property, fencing windows and so on that's shown up, up on that slide. Um, this shows the site location at 401 East Bridge Street that's outlined in blue in your map. And the surrounding properties are residential. Um, again, along Bridge Street, there are some uh, bed and breakfast short-term rentals, rather. To the southwest is the Langdon Center, and to the immediate west is the Bridge Street Museum, as well as a single-family residential a few on the street there. So this proposal would be for short-term rental unhosted with two bedrooms. And the site has two parking spaces to the north side of the, the building. This is your zoning map. The site is zoned residential. To the pro property to the north is PD in purple. And that properties are also for residential use. The to the south is also yellow for residential. And um, to the south, um, West there is the Langdon Center, that's zoned Central Business District. And this is the location map showing nearby bed and breakfast operations or uses, and outlined in pink is relative to the subject property outlined in blue. This is the site plan. Um, so the house fronts onto Bridge Street and Stockton Street, it's right there on the corner. Uh, the parking is shown to the north side or up side on this map um, of the house structure, and there's a garage there as well. Um, the, the back of the property and towards the front is fenced, and the applicant, again, has renovated this. This is the floor plan showing the two bedrooms and other room uses in the house. This is a photo um, taken probably a couple months by, ago by now, but it shows the new picket fence that the property's been um, upgraded and, and cleaned up significantly from its prior condition. 
This is the HPC approved landscape plan. There was a question at plan commission, so I included that for, for your benefit so you could see the, the approved plan. The, the green color shows where um, grass would be placed and, and the other areas would be um, decomposed granite and along with plants and plantings. Um, to the, the east of the house, there's a fence that fences basically the front yard from the backyard. And your SUP criteria is the same as we've seen in other SUPs um, for short-term rentals. Uh, basically, is the use harmonious and compatible? Well, it's been found to be uh, able to be compatible and harmonious, harmonious subject to standards of the zoning ordinance um, and city codes. Are the activities requested normally associated with the requested use? They are. Is the nature of the use reasonable? It appears to be. Um, and provided the special standards and city codes are complied with. And are such other measures that will secure and, public and protect the public. Um, the fencing provides, uh, excuse me, fencing provides screening for the parking and there are two um, bedrooms. Uh, the parking is also screened um, from adjacent properties by uh, a garage. So it's a straight head on parking situation. And these are the additional um, standards contained in the zoning ordinance. Uh, they're contained in your staff report, and we've, we mentioned them for these cases. Uh, public notice was mailed out on March, tw March 2nd to 21 public um, property owners and property on the municipal tax roll. And we also provided notice on February 25th in the Hood County News as required. Uh, when this report was, was written, we had received two letters in favor and six letters in opposition to the request. Your Planning and Zoning Commission on March 13th recommended approval um, by a vote of 3-2, three, um, three in favor, two opposed, and the motion carries with an approval then. And these are the standards that were recommended, the uh, one-year term, subject to the site plan and the floor plan that were submitted subject that no more than two bedrooms and there was um, the, the four five and six are your standard conditions and number seven um, was in addition i missed this there were there was some area that appeared not to be not to have parking screening so we added a, a condition for that screening i apologize about that and then staff was recommending and still recommends approval with all the same conditions and these are your voting options I'd ha be happy to answer any questions you have. Okay. Could I follow up and have you put the site plan back up? Mm -hmm. I sure. Want, I don't want any ambiguity. Uh, this one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Did you have a, a that's one of the conditions because it's built that way it's observed that way you don't go back to your conditions sure uh, yeah i'm fixing to explain it to you okay number two they shall conform with that site plan and the floor plan on exhibit c so this recommendation doesn't follow the, the recommendation from the historic group is that correct? It does follow, um, but the Historic Preservation Commission does not review the use, but the site plan and the Exhibit C are subject of the use, the SUP. Well, it go goes back to that landscape plan because okay. I don't think that's referenced in those motions. No, it is not. That's the Historic Preservation purview on the landscaping. Right. Yeah. And and so, uh, they, based on the recommendations, they. There's not a preference to whether they leave it the way it is or do it this way. Is that correct? That would be the Historic Preservation Commission would look to the landscaping. That's correct. Okay. So you're not voting on that page right there. That's what I'm bringing to you. I just wanted you to see that. That's just suggested. Yeah. Okay. Let's Back uh, to your options. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, public hearing on this. 
I have uh, Mr. Peter Garland. At 511 East Bridge Street. Thank you, Mayor. Thank City you. City Council. Could you put the landscaping plan back up, please? I think they're trying. <laughs> the Historic Preservation Commission made an agreement with the applicant that the green area would be grass. It is still brown except for that area in the back uh, up next to the house on the north side. It is my understanding that sod was placed on top of the granite, so it's not doing well. However, the street side and the area uh, south of the uh, little walkway within the fence is still granite. Now, there was an agreement made with the Historic Preservation Commission and the applicant and was approved by the Historic Preservation Commission that we didn't want granite in Granbury, Texas because it is not in the uh, vein of what we have in Texas. We may have that in farther south Texas or west Texas, but in Granbury, the yards have grass. And that's what we expected for the um, applicant to have grass there. If you approve this without her having to put grass, you don't need a Historic Preservation Commission. And I'm a member of the Historic Preservation Commission. And I love serving on it. But we need some backup with the agreements that we make with the applicants. So I urge you to deny this application. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ms. Amy Dwight. My name is Amy Dwight. I live at 405 Counts Alley. And I'll spare you all the rest of it since you guys covered all kinds of lovely depressing things in your previous comments. Um, but regarding the landscaping plan, we specifically asked about this during P&Z and we were told that the SUP would not be granted until the landscaping plan had been completely put in place. So if that's not the case, then we all need to get on the same page. And I'll just leave it there. Thank you. Ms. Pamela Brewster. Good evening, City Council, Mayor. I'm Pamela A. Brewster. I live at 407 Count Sally with my husband, Lou James in Old Mill Crossing. First of all, quickly, thank you for your priorities. Thank you for sending them to the Texas legislature. I, and I, I approve the fact that you wanna keep control of our community in our hands. So thank you for doing that. Because we are hoping that that does not pass. What I wanna do tonight is tell you a story. And I want it to be a fast story, but it's a terribly important story to all of us in single family residential neighborhoods here in Granbury. Christmas, you remember Christmas last? Cold, bitter, winds, below zero temperatures. We were going to Austin to visit our granddaughters and our daughter and son-in-law. We didn't leave on the 23rd because it was eight below zero. So we left on the 24th. We'd done everything to the house, all those little insulator caps, insulator bags on all of our outside spigots, disconnected our hoses, everything we could do, and we go down and have a wonderful Christmas. Christmas night, we're sitting down to a fabulous dinner my daughter prepared, and we get a text. A neighbor has walked with his family beside our house and heard hissing coming from one of our faucets. 
it's icy, water's coming out, oh my gosh. So he calls us. He goes, he has gone up, he has looked at it, it's split. The faucet, the hose bib. So we're in a panic. So we call our next door neighbor, Amy and Danny Dwight. Yes, they can turn the water off, but they're in Colleen. We're three and a half hours away, they're two and a half hours away. Oh my gosh, no sweetheart granddaughters, we can't stay for dinner, we've got to go back to Granberry. I'm in, envisioning water spewing down my hallways, coming into the wall, but then I think of another neighbor, a fabulous neighbor, Jerry Morgan of Morgan Plumbing, good neighbor to have. So I called Jerry and I said, I'm so sorry, it's 6.30 at night, I know you're probably at your Christmas dinner, and he was, with his wife and family, and I told him what was going on. He said, let me get my toolbox, let me get my flashlight, tell me where your cutoff is. And I could tell him, I knew where it was in the yard. He said, I'll go right down there. So in the meantime, I'm throwing all of our belongings into our luggage to head back to Granberry as fast as we could. He calls and he says, I checked all of them, I've turned your water off, it's not leaking, yes, it is broken, you need it replaced or you can't turn your water back on. Yay, first thing is fixed. But the second thing isn't. He said, tomorrow's the day after Christmas. There won't be any plumbing supply houses open, but we will definitely do something. So we met him at 2 o'clock the next day. He and his son had looked everywhere for a hose bib that fit us. And so he put it in, and he wouldn't take a penny for that. Left his Christmas dinner. I'm almost through. Left his Christmas dinner to come help us. My story is about neighbors. If, the, if I had been surrounded by short-term rentals with strangers, none of that would have happened. I could have had a destroyed home, but instead, every neighbor stepped up. What can I do for you? How can I support you? Let me know on Christmas Day. I just want to tell you, please, you. we need neighbors. Thank you. Thank you. I had to hear the end of that story. Thank you. Mr. Lou James. Thank you. I'm Lou James, 407 Counts Alley, and how do I follow that? Well, um, I understand the legislature has bills that may or may not pass, things may or may not change. In the meantime, I'm here because you sent me a letter and invited me. You asked me to come. You said one of the things that you consider is density. Okay, you looked at the density map. There are already four within the 600 feet radius, four short-term rentals within that radius, three more down the street, and one right across the street. Interestingly, planning and zoning voted three to two to support this. Two of the five voted against it. The deciding vote, the new member, asked Ms. Huawei, he said, D does the city ordinance say anything specific about density for us to consider? Ms. Huawei said, no, it does not. So his conclusion was he could not consider density. Well, I believe you can use your common sense and your judgment, and the idea is to consider each case individually for density. Part of the reason you don't have additional ordinances, in the September meeting, September 2022, Mr. Rodriguez said, the neighbors are gonna come here and talk about it and say we don't want it in our neighborhood and that will help us make those decisions whether or not we approve an SUP for that neighborhood. If we have enough neighbors oppose the STR in their neighborhood, that's effectively doing our job for us. And I agree completely. I assume you all agreed with them because you all voted with them that night. Uh, well, here we are, uh, six letters, to, within the 200 foot zone, six letters to two letters. Now, if you look at those two letters, it's from a husband and wife in the same household. So I'm not gonna concede that. What we have is six households against this and one household in favor of it. So if six to one is not enough neighborhood, neighborhood opposition, what is? Thank you. Thank you. Is uh, the owner, Ms. Hagler, or are you here? Yes. I'm Karen Hagler, and I live at 401, some 401 East Bridge Street, Granbury. And I'm here to answer questions, and I also would like to make a couple of corrections in regards to the landscape. 
as I understand, we did put in sod a couple of weeks ago in the back part, and what the pre previous speaker did not realize is that it was to a great um, labor type situation because we had to pull out all of the plastic underneath and scraped a great majority of that uh, DG back. We put it into other areas that didn't need to be in the grass. So it is not doing poorly. It, it, we've now gotten some sun in the last couple of days and it's greening up and it's getting a little bit of water and it's a project. This is a, what is the landscape situation probably won't have the plantings and the rest of what you're seeing until May because we need the, the weather to cooperate. The greenery where he's complaining and others are about the DG out front, in theory, that's an, not in theory, reality, that is not my property, that city property. And we will address that as we go along. But the conditions, as I remember from planning and zoning, was not the SUP being approved, it was a certificate of, of occupancy. So saying that, I'm just trying to do some of the corrections that were spoken to. Now, okay. I, I'll entertain questions from y'all, right. too. Council, questions from Segal? Mr. Mayor, Bale? I just had a question for staff then. So where is this area that, I mean, if you pull the street view up, the site, street view up, where's the property that she's referring to that it's not hers, that belongs to us? Gen generally speaking, um, there's a, I'll call it an apron area along the street. You can see the curbing in that picture. Yep. And then beyond that, towards the, the pro their private property, there's an area that's the city right of way. That's, that's I believe, is what she's speaking to is um, not yet in grass, although the landscape plan shows that that should be in, in grass. And it, and it does intend, we do intend to. We're moving along as quickly as we can on this. But also, I believe, if I remember correctly being told, there is a plan to extend the sidewalk that would come in front of that property within the next couple of years. Whether that's right or wrong, that's what I've heard. So my, the white picket fence that you're seeing, that's my property line. Well, no, that's, your property line is a fee simple property line that goes in the middle of the street. The rest of it's dedicated for the use of mm -hmm. the city yeah, right yes. away and the, and the uh, utility easement and setback. Yes, sir. So you've got a setback. Mm -hmm where you can build, that's where the house is built. Mm -hmm. You got a front yard and under under the current ordinance, you're responsible for the landscaping all the way to the curb, mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking that responsibility. There you go, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mayor. <clears throat> Ms. Burwell. Kara, can you, can we go over the landscape information again? Was this supposed to have been done before the certificate of occupancy and the SUP or so the certificate current with sure thanks sorry um, the certificate of occupancy is submitted when the applicant is is ready to request the property be used for short-term rental and staff's review of the certificate of occupancy includes the the um, safety provisions and and in the community development department we look at any approvals that we that you all as boards and commissions have made and council um, to make sure that the property um, would be in compliance as well. So that that's the certificate of occupancy in summary. Well, also the SUP, I guess, because there seems to be a discrepancy between the historic commission and the owner as far as when this landscaping is supposed to be done. Right. So I, I want to clear that up yeah. before we make a decision on this. I understand. So the the landscaping should be done um, in in accordance with the HPC requirements, and we look to that also when we issue the certificate. Mm -hmm. So let yes, me sir. summarize it, if I could. Uh, so if if you approve this. Uh -huh then the next step would be for the property owner to bring the property into compliance that meets all the standards and the HPC guidelines, and then the inspection team would go out and review and inspect, and if it meets everything that's been approved by this board or this council and the HPC 
then they would be able to issue the certificate of occupancy. Okay, I understand that. I'm looking at this and listening to what our uh, board member said that this does not look like what they approved. So I want to make sure that what we do approve tonight will come into compliance with what the Historic Preservation Committee decided. So I, from what I understand right now, what we see here is not what that, that you approved. Is that correct? Is that correct? So there's a discrepancy there so that I'm not understanding. I, I don't understand it either. The reason being is that this is what I was presented with as what was approved. Um, I think that the, there might be some confusion on this plan. To the, the right side, there's a note that says future planting areas and points to the same brown color. And so those future planting areas um, should be expected to, to not be decomposed granite, but rather contain some type of uh, ground, plant, ground cover, or small uh, plants like flowers, that kind of thing. Okay, I still have the same question. What is here is what was not approved by our commission. So I guess I'm not seeing what you guys approved. That's, can, it, can we ask him to come back up and speak? Yeah. Mr. Garland, if you would, please. And Ms. Hagler, we'll, we'll have you back if you want. What you're looking at is the plan that we agreed upon. The applicant and a professional landscape designer put this together. It has not been enacted. In the back, behind those two circles, up by the house, has been planted with sod. Everything else is just like it looks from the street view photograph. In other words, it's brown. So she has not fulfilled the agreement that we made between the Historic, Historic Preservation Commission and the applicant. Okay, that And I don't want, I, I would suggest that you not approve it or table it or something until she comes into compliance with the agreement that we made. Thank you for that, because that was not what I was understanding. I thought that this was not the one that you guys approved. Um, but as Kira just pointed out, what you did approve has to come into compliance before they receive their certificate of occupancy, correct? Right. So at some point, before they can put people in those rooms, this has to be completed. Okay. Okay. Mr. Rodriguez? No, I think she answered the question. Okay. Could you uh, spend a little more time on density? Or spend any time? Was, I think that was a question. Um, we, we have no density controls. So therefore, in, in the uh, decision making, uh, we don't have any policies or regulations on that basis. Okay. Mayor, yes. I believe that was part of the discussion that we had planned to have in the future. Is that correct? The, the workshop or meeting that we postponed to go over the regulations again and we were kind of waiting on that density issue because what was presented was not something that we agreed upon at the time. So we were waiting on the density issue until something happens with the legislature. That was my recollection anyway. Did what, do you know where we stand on that? Or is it something we're gonna, can, should pursue? It all depends. Right now, I don't think you, you have the uh, ability to regulate density under the current state law. And our attorney and I talked about this earlier today, so um, I'm just echoing what he told me earlier. Um, and, and if we were to adopt something that regulated density, probably be falling under uh, uh, equal protection clause under the U.S. Constitution that would be, would be defeated and trying to hold that position. So um, as much as as much as density is desired, um, I, you know, you do have the ability to withhold an SUP for legitimate reasons if they're not meeting the guidelines that are laid out in the code. But if they are meeting the guidelines, 
you simply have a ministerial duty here and uh, that's why i was alluding to we got to get out of this tennis game we're playing with these SUPs because you, you have a ministerial duty let's just go ahead and do the administration of it and and take it off this hour-long discussion every time we have one come forward so um, until and, and then the legislature may change everything and we don't have any control so we'll, we'll see what happens I hope that answers your questions thank you uh, so mayor yes sir mr. Rodriguez so cure and uh, so they're meeting all the guidelines on this all the requirements yes for the SUP for the SUP yes that was my question Thank the, you. the only thing that concerns me is is the approval for the landscaping I mean that's where I'm stuck at I mean can we send this back to the Historic Preservation Commission oh. I would know I would if you're if you're wanting a path forward that, that right. follows what I understand you're telegraphing I would make a motion that you approve the SUP as presented with the addition requirement that the Historic Preservation Committee's recommendations are applied as well as a condition as a condition okay uh -huh. if I understand what does that telegraph what you're trying to say yeah I mean and I feel for those uh, the neighbors that don't want STRs in their neighborhoods but when you're up here making those decisions your your hands are tied um, and I can't tell you not to do something on your property that's if it's by right you know if if you have it by right to do it I can't come over there and tell you don't do it and I can't deny you from doing it um, you know sometimes um, like I said back then is is you know you have enough neighborhood you have enough neighbors to put pressure on the neighbors that they you don't want those in there you know that's they're gonna they're gonna know that you don't want those in there so um, but at this point you know they meet all the requirements okay. thank you Yes, ma'am. Did you want to speak? Well, I you need to come and and uh, present yourself to the stand here. And yes, we will need you to fill out a form before you leave. First. No, no. good. Just, just before you leave. Hmm? Okay, I'll go. Okay, I'm Vicki Nivens, and I own Hotel Lucy mm -hmm. and a lot of the properties that people are referring to tonight. So, I just wanted to quickly say. Um, for me, you guys know, I do, I do try really hard to make my properties look pretty. We're always working in the yards and trying to make everything look nice. I have not met Karen, but I have watched her property. And I know that she's worked very hard, you know, to make her property look a lot better. Now, I, I can honestly say I don't know what the situation was, but I do know that. My issue or my problem that I just don't understand is why sometimes I feel like we are held to a different um, a different standard maybe um, because we are short-term rental. I can name several yards of people that are, you know, graph about us and their yards are not nice at all. So that's one thing. I know Karen's trying and I try. The other thing I just want to voice my opinion on is, you know, the short-term rental and the neighbors not helping. I know for a fact. Now, I, like Pam says, if she had short-term rentals by her, she would not have had the help. I'm going to disagree with that. Pam has my phone number. All she had to do was pick up the phone and call me, and I would have ha I would have been there, or I would have got a hold of somebody in my my staff. My house, one of my houses is right next to her, and I would have been there. To, so to say that short-term rental people who own those do not help is just assuming because I'm always there to help my neighbors. So Thank you. I just wanted to say that. That's all. Thank, Thank you guys you. so much. I would not want your job. Will you please, please sign in. the rules there a little bit so I appreciate uh, your patience I'm gonna close the uh, public hearing now
I'm consider adopting, I'm going to call for a vote or call for a motion. I'll consider adopting ordinance number 23-30, approving a request of Karen Hagler for a specific use permit to allow short-term short rental, residential unhosted, and a residential 8400 zoning district. The property is addressed as 401 Bridge Street, and I think we want to amend that motion to include, what would the verbiage be? Uh, landscape. Yes. Okay. Upon implementation or uh, to, you know, this, we're adopting this ordinance and we would approve it with help here. You know, um, I mean, if you, if you want to add the provision that um, it be conditioned upon, the, the approval be conditioned upon the uh, historic preservation landscaping plan being adhered to you can but that was already approved by HPC and it's going to have to be adhered to anyway whether you put it in this motion or not in order for them to get their CO they're going to have to meet all the HPC requirements and all the requirements of the the SUP so it you, you don't have to put it in there because it's going to have to be met anyway but you you, okay. you can add that condition that the uh, landscape plan approved by HPC be a condition of the SUP. Um, okay, if someone wants to make that motion with the addition, uh, I'm confident that uh, we've heard enough here tonight that uh, we have, all would have that expectation that that landscape plan will be implemented before the uh, uh, certificate of occupancy is issued. Is that fair? Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Ms. Burwell. I will go ahead and make a motion to approve as presented with the caveat that we uh, that she come into compliance with the approved landscape by the uh, HPC. Okay. I second that motion. Mr. Wadley seconds that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. It's approved 6 and 0. Oh. Thank you all of you. Number 7.4. Consider the following request of TNP Properties Family LP. Adopt ordinance number 23-31 to rezone a portion of a .996 area track of the Marcus Smith survey, abstract number 504, <coughs> from heavy commercial to light commercial, and adopt ordinance number 23-32 approving a specific use permit to allow the operation of a contractor shop without outside storage in a light commercial zoning district. The property is addressed as 1306 East Highway 377. Mr. Kaufman. Go ahead, Ms. Wobby. Thank you. I'll just keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, so this again is your site location map of the property. It's outlined in blue there in the screen. Um, this is an area that has um, frontage onto the Highway 377. Primarily, the area is um, some type of commercial use, whether it be retail office or, or some other or type of use. Um, to the east of the property, um, to the north side of that long east property line, is a utility facility. Um, and then to the, the west some distance is an apartment uh, complex just right there by the lake. The proposal is a zone change from light commercial and heavy commercial to allow light commercial um, zoning. And the purpose is to change that zoning so that they can place a contractor shop without outside storage. So everything has to be complete completely indoors. And where would that occur on the property? It's in that, that building that's towards the rear. Uh, on your map in front of you, it has a pink dot on it. So that's where the, the uh, location of the contractor shop would be, in that building. So this is two parts. It's a zoning and a SUP request. This is a street view of the property. You can see behind the, the strip center there, that, that building where the contractor would be located that is behind on the right-hand picture. 
Um, that's taken from the Highway 377 area. And on the left side is the street view from Crawford Avenue. The, the site currently only has access from 377 and not onto Crawford. Um, we'll start with the zoning request. The comprehensive plan is the policy for land use and the comprehensive plan recommends for this site retail office. Retail office um, corresponds to the like commercial request and is pretty much as it says retail and office in character. So when there's a, a more um, intense use such as the contractor's office, um, all activities are required to be indoors and no outdoor storage. Um, this shows the future land use map as existing. The office retail is there in, in that red color. And so you can see the whole strip between Crawford and the 377 is designated for office retail um, and, and along both sides of this property. So the, the light commercial um, corresponds to that office retail designation, whereas the back side of this property and a part of that building is actually zoned heavy commercial. So you have a property that is split zoned and needs to be um, singularly zoned into the light commercial, um, which requires the SUP um, for the, the contractor business. Um, the condition is, is the same on both of the adjacent properties. And if those properties were to come in for um, any proposals, we would take a look and, and see if they would need to be changed in terms of zoning. Um, so this just shows the proposed uh, light commercial zoning um, purpose uh, and, and that use, again, no open storage is, is one of the purposes. And some of the light commercial zoning uses, the by right ones on the left side, mostly retail, um, some gym, health club, and offices, and the SUP office uh, uses on the right side characteristic of the contractor shop without outside storage. The impact of the zoning change, these are actually the criteria in your zoning ordinance um, by which you should be making your decision. Um, in this case, the, the proposal aligns the site's zoning with the comprehensive plan and future land use plan map. Um, the light commercial district's uses are compatible and com consistent with surrounding uses. Streets are in and infrastructure are, are in place. Um, the character of the surrounding area, we've covered that, and it's consistent. If approved, um, to change the zoning, the site would need to be improved with um, zoning ordinance development standards for the light commercial. Uh, this would be proven out through permitting review. We've done a, a high-level review of that. They would have enough parking as existing, might need to be striped, um, and there's some landscaping that would need to be installed. Um, it's discounted because a, a reuse of the site is all uh, allowed by the ordinance. Um, this is the application for the zoning change and transition to discuss the specific use permit application. So again, um, we've reviewed the surrounding area, contractor shop with outside storage, without, that's hard to say sometimes, without outside storage, that is no outside storage, um, is, is defined in the zoning ordinance and the proposed use meets that definition. There's only one supplemental standard required and that is any outdoor lighting needs to be directed away from property zoned or developed with residential use. So that would be directing the light towards the building and not towards the north side of the property. Um, the SUP criteria that we see on, on these requests include the existing building having previously been used for storage, no outside uh, activity is proposed. Are the activities requested normally associated with requested use based on the application content, they're normally associated. Is the nature of the use reasonable? It appears to be uh, reasonable. It is aligned with the defined use. And are other measures available to secure and protect the public? Um, the use of the site uh, will be within the existing building, so that should provide protection. Um, these are the, the SUP criteria also in the ordinance that we've already covered in this presentation content. Uh, public notice was provided in the mail on March 2nd to 14 property owners and also in the Hood County newspaper on February 25th is required by law. And we've received nothing in response either in favor nor in opposition to the request. 
The Planning Zoning Commission recommended approval of the request by, of the zoning request by a 5-0 vote and also with a, of the specific use permit with a 5-0 vote and those following conditions on your slide. Um, that is that there be no outside storage as, as required. The SUP is subject to supplemental standards, that number eight with the lighting. The specific use permit is subject to other city code requirements and then the violation conformance. Uh, standard condition. Staff had the same recommendations. And you have two motions to make, one for the, the zoning application and one for the SUP application. And those are shown on your screen. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. I'm going to go ahead and open the public hearing. I don't have anyone that signed up to speak. Is there an owner or representative here that would want to speak? Seeing no one, I will uh, close the public hearing. Council, questions of uh, staff? Mr. Corrigan? Kira, is there any, um, has there any, been any conversation or um, about possibly taking access to Crawford in the event that this lot were to ever split off from the way it is currently? I haven't been involved in any of those, okay. any conversation like that. Maybe. You know, I might, I might just add to that comment that before they could sell that property, they would have to subdivide that property and that access would have to be a, addressed and the parking. Is that, do we know if that's something that's been mentioned no, to the? they're not wanting to do that. Okay. The well, same property not today, owners but. Forever, right. Um, and they're just trying to get the renter in there and be legal. Okay. That's all they're doing. That'll work. Okay. There was a question uh, about the, or there's a comment about the landscape installation requirements are triggered as a result of moving it to LC. Did, you know, is that, they're going to have to put in trees and things like this and this is. Right, they, they would need to put in some trees. They would have um, one canopy tree, three ornamental trees and eight shrubs and also one street tree based on the information we have today. Okay. Uh, I left the meeting early, I also, there was also a question, could they have completed the task that they want to do here, the rental that they wanted to do and maintained the heavy commercial that they have without filing for this permit at all or this SUP? Could they? Uh, so if they had done that, the. The commercial, heavy commercial would have stayed on the property except the building is is sliced by a zoning district. So the, I guess if to do it legally, they'd have had to build a wall on that portion of the building. I, so so the and, contractor and building is not uh, doing the, not, the task that they've asked to do in the contract or in the building is not allowed in heavy commercial, but is allowed in light commercial. Well. It, it's allowed in light commercial if it's, it has no outdoor activity. And if it's in heavy commercial, then there's a route they could have taken for outdoor activity, except that it's, it's only a portion of the building could have been used because it's sliced by that zoning district. I, I just ask, is the owner quite happy with this request? If Based on my knowledge, it is. I think, um, Mr. Kaufman, do you? Yeah, I, I contacted the, the the realtor that represents TMP. They're the property managers for the, the owners, um, and they're quite content with the process we're going through. To answer your question, the only way that that, that uh, contractor could go into that location, according to our code, in the current zoning condition that it's in, would be with an SUP, and that would be without outside storage so but because the property's got both zoning mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to clean that up i say they that'd be our staff and the and the developer that owns it the property so they're willing to work together to get it all under the the light commercial and to comply the way it sits now with the heavy commercial where just a, a snip of the building uh is in there it, it's questionable so they're just right. trying to remove that question so they're very, they're very amiable to work with us and do what we need to do, aware that they're going to need to do some landscaping as well. Okay. Thanks, Steph, for that. Other questions? Mr. Rodriguez? 
the landscaping is what's getting me on that one because if it's already heavy commercial they've already done the landscaping requirements for heavy commercial which is more than what it is for light commercial is that correct same for both okay so yeah. if it's already heavy commercial they've already done the, the landscaping the, requirements the, yeah those the zoning probably occurred before the landscape ordinance took place <laughs> and so this is one of those non-conforming uses that really does <laughs> throw us into a tailspin with all the things if you do x then a b c has to be done and and we're doing x and they're willing to do a b and c so all right excellent okay or they would be here with opposition i mean they're ready to do this and move on so i might just add that that since they've hired this property manager the occupancy rate in their strip center is you know great and they've really improved the looks of it and they've done a lot of good things so I'm, I'm really proud that they're being a good community neighbor with the signage that they've put in. They've cleaned up the whole strip center appearance and have made it really a, a positive impact on the way it looks. And, and so uh, this additional landscaping to the back will only enhance what they've done. So, and it'll be back off of Crawford Street, I'm sure, where you can see it when you're driving down Crawford. Okay. Other? No. Okay, so we need two motions, I understand here. First motion would be consider the following request of TNP Properties Family, LP1, adopt ordinance number 23-31 to rezone a portion of a point nine nine six acre tract of the Marcus Smith Survey, abstract number 504 from heavy commercial HC to light commercial HC. That would be the first motion that I'd be looking for. Mr. Wadley? Mr. Mayor, make that motion. Mr. Wadley makes the motion. Second. Mr. Corrigan seconds the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. I hear no nays. The first motion passes 6 and 0. Oh. Second motion would be to adopt Ordinance number 23-32, approving a specific use permit to allow the operation of a contractor shop without outside storage in a light commercial zoning district. The property is addressed as 1306 East Highway 377. Do I hear a motion? Mayor, I'll make Ms. a motion Burwell. to approve as presented. Ms. Burwell makes a motion. Do I hear a second? Second. Mr. Corrigan makes a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. It's approved 6 and 0. Oh. Okay. Moving on to 7.5. Consider adopting ordinance number 23-09 approving the request of the City of Granbury to amend select sections of the City of Granbury zoning ordinance related to tree preservation and conservation. Amendments proposed are to section Article 8 landscape requirements and Article 13 tree preservation requirements. Thank you, Mayor. Before we get into this, um, I would ask that you go back in your Granicus and refresh that so that you could see that there is a uh, uh, the ordinance that was presented back in January to you has been included in your packet. You need to hit the go back to the agenda page and then hit the little round circle on the left hand corner. And then you'll be able to get the attachments that were added. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and open up the uh, public meeting while you're looking for that. So no one has signed up. Does anyone want to speak on this? No one is speaking, and I will go ahead and close the public meeting. This is, uh, as you recall, we kicked down the road on January 3rd, waiting uh, further information. This is an ordinance that has been approved by the uh, planning and zoning approved by uh, our staff at that point in time and we asked for additional information here's all of the uh, details that are here so is there comments mayor yes ma'am miss burwell you actually hit on what i was going to talk about we actually did ask um, staff to produce a study from other cities that were similar to ours regarding tree ordinances and i didn't see anything in that packet uh, I know the staff recommendation is to put this off again and I actually would tend to agree with this. Um, we don't really have anything to base this on based on our last conversation up here on the dais. 
we had I went back and, and looked we actually asked for additional studies from staff and I, I'm guessing you know we've been a little busy so I'm guessing that there hasn't been enough time to come up with comparative city ordinances that would help us make this decision as I in January as I recall uh, we had uh, a presentation Mr. Ross did you present the trees presentation I was on vacation. <laughs> planned vacation yes, yes. Uh, but as I recall it was uh, by a city I, and I recall I'm not uh, disputing what you're saying there but the cities this as I recall you did look at different cities have you had a chance to follow up and ask for I'm not sure what information we were looking for at that point in time specifically but uh, and in fact there was uh, one other piece that I do recall that uh, we uh, there was an, an a uh, a belief that we would lose our a tree city uh, what do you call it scenic. a scenic city designation and I believe that that has been proven not to be the case I did I did not present the item but I was sitting in for Chris at that right. meeting uh, when Kira presented the item and there were that was one of the concerns another was the legislature possibly doing more uh, damage to take the local control away from cities uh, there was also uh, there appeared to be uh, some hesitation given I guess making the decision to make it voluntary the tree ordinance and uh, at that time and so you did ask council did that we go do some comparative analysis and bring that back at the April 4th meeting and that was April 4th meeting was really after asking us if, if that was enough time for, for staff to do that mm -hmm. and as it ended up it wasn't as uh, Mayor Pro Tem said and so that's why it's uh, before you tonight because this was a date certain that was requested but that analysis has not been completed and then I think part of the recommendation because the legislature is in session and may do more uh, to cities during this legislation that the recommendation from staff was to postpone this but I know I think Chris may have some uh, comments as well on kind of since he wasn't here for that meeting he didn't get to make those statements and I wasn't in the room like Chris was with you all when I think some of those were discussed under uh, conversations attorney I'm happy to answer any any other questions I'm capable of wasn't trying to throw you under the bus, but uh, <laughs> did a pretty good job. <laughs> so, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Coffin, for for my benefit, what additional information are we seeking? Um, I don't think there's another city in Texas that's got a voluntary tree ordinance. It wasn't regarding the the voluntary portion of it. It was equating what other ordinances other cities have to what we have and what we were proposing and um, at this juncture and, and I think I said that night I don't know if they will come up with any additional information but we, we had asked Michael to direct staff to do that and based on that and based on what may happen in the legislature and I, I hate to keep going back to this but we've got till the end of May you know to decide whether we're going to put these things in place and then have to retract them at the cost to the taxpayers because we've imposed something that the state's going to take away from us and that's going to cost time and money so um, may is not that far away i guess my suggestion would be um, to postpone this again until july 18th if that's a possibility so that we can do some additional research um, and by then we should know whether that is going to pass the legislature whether we can even have a tree ordinance or not and and maybe during that same time um, you know the landscape ordinance kind of goes hand in hand with the tree ordinance maybe we ought to look at that at the same time and we do have our consultant working on this information and I can tell you that he's proposing to take the landscape ordinance whatever shape or form it ends up and take it out of the zoning ordinance to where it's just a, a, a standard in a building subdivision ordinances so 
Um, he's also talking about doing some other things. But we're trying to uh, do a comprehensive sweep, hit the low-hanging fruit with that cha those changes, implement those incrementally, and then have a cleanup ordinance at the end to, to make everything whole again. So, um, yeah, well, you can do what you want with this tonight, but I felt like I needed to put that ordinance in there because that was what you were looking at when you moved forward to, to table it. No, um, I agree. You, you do have the ability to do whatever you want with this tonight. You can say, forget it. We're leaving it alone. We're going to consider it some more. You can, I don't know what the action was that was taken at the last meeting. I wasn't here, but don't have it in front of you. But I think there were two options. You can adopt the uh, recommendation from the um, planning and zoning, or you can reject it, or you can table it. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of the path you went last time was you tabled it to a date certain. But I, I, I want to stress to staff that if they table this to a date certain, I want some results. And I've talked about this at lunch with a couple of you today. Mm -hmm. When the council tells us to do some research for a date certain, that means we've got to get it done. And we can't push it off on somebody else. So we've got to get it done. So thank you. So with that conversation. I'm not, I'm not oh. through talking. <laughs> if you were about to make a motion. No, I'm not through talking. Uh, I, and I, I hear what you're saying about the, uh, you know, it could be changed at the Texas legislature. But I s strongly suggest that uh, it's not going to be changed in the Texas legislature so that uh, our citizens can't voluntarily do the, uh, as described in this uh, preservation right here. This is actually uh, uh, very citizen friendly, I would say. It's not uh, overbearing uh, from a uh, governmental standpoint at all. And I would see the, the uh, um, you know, the Texas legislature, like so many of these, these uh, things that I read, the city cannot, uh, you know, you cannot limit agricultural operations within the city limits. You, um, you, let's see, no city occupational licenses can be allowed. No city regulation. If I could read all these, there's only 8,000 bills. We'll be here a while. But, I mean, there, you know, the city can't do this. The city can't do that. And I could see the city saying, oh, you can't have a tree ordinance. We have a voluntary tree preservation ordinance. I go for the voluntary. And I would uh, say that uh, to, to achieve that, we would uh, consider adopting this ordinance number 2309, approving the request of the city of Granbury to amend select sections, et cetera, et cetera. Other comments or questions? I have no Sorry. problem with the voluntary tree ordinance. That It was brought mm -hmm. up in the last meeting, which is why it was tabled. Uh, some other right. folks up here didn't like the word voluntary, so that's why we're here today. Okay. Do I hear an ordinance or a uh, mo Mr. Mr. Wadley, well, sorry. I think some of this started because the tree ordinance as, as it is can be a hindrance to development. And, the, and then the reluctance to get, get rid of it completely is because once we get rid of it, you can't redo it. Is that correct? You can't, you can't put a tree ordinance in place anymore. According to Texas state well, law, is that correct? You you have one, and you're making it no, voluntary. I understand. So I, I, I would I, I, I would know. defer I would I would say that if you don't repeal it, you still have a tree ordinance. Right. So my that's my point. I felt like in December we were trying to decide if we were going to get rid of it completely, which means we could never have one again, or we we said let's table it, but but having it as is 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 a hindrance to development. By making it voluntary, we still have a tree ordinance. So we could at some future date amend it again if we wanted to make it more restrictive or whatever. We would still have that opportunity later by keeping it as is. If we did what the mayor just suggested, you know, we, we could say let's, let's change our tree ordinance right now and make it voluntary, but that way we still have a tree ordinance. And it could always be amended later to make it something else. We do depend on what the, depend on what the legislature does and things like that. Yeah, I, I don't. I didn't well. have a problem with that the first time, honestly. Um, I, I want to clear something up though, because I think that we may be confusing the tree ordinance with the landscaping ordinance. Because I think that it's the landscaping ordinance that is cost prohibitive to new development. Tree ordinance. Well, let me finish. The tree ordinance 
is more on the cutting down trees, making way for new, uh, new development on old property. So please correct me if I'm wrong, no. but I think that is what we're looking at as far as landscaping ordinance being more cost prohibitive to a development, new development, not old development. The tree ordinance is more toward the old development side. Am I correct? Let's just take it an <coughs> example so we'll, we'll understand it completely. Um, so the landscape ordinance <coughs> is what's giving the grief to the church. The landscape ordinance is what's giving the grief to uh, onerous grief to built the last manufacturing plant. Um, those two issues and, and possibly this new SUP we approved tonight <coughs> could prove onerous. Uh, hadn't done the math yet to see what that cost to implement that, but uh, they, they're they happy to move forward and do that. They said they understand they got to plant some trees. So, um, But these other people have been resistant to that, and so that's where we found ourselves. You know, uh, Wings, et cetera, needed to put in, uh, they had to get a, a, go before the ZBA not to have to put in landscape islands in their parking lot that's behind the fence behind their building. And so that's the landscape ordinance. The tree preservation ordinance would be like the the 75 acre track towards it's uh, on Highway 51 or yeah Highway 4 excuse me that was just recently sold. It's an industrial site, and it's loaded with trees. And so how does our economic development department attract uh, someone to come to town and and you know show them a site visit? And then say, oh, by the way, we have this tree preservation ordinance and about three-fourths of those trees you're going to have to save you, you're going to have to write us a big check. So, and by the way, you need to hire somebody to identify each one of those trees, bring us a map, and let us analyze what that is. It's just onerous for, for development. And I, I understand we need trees, and, and we can. there's just got to be a balance. And I think, I think that the political wind of when this ordinance was adopted back in the 2000s have changed and the private rights and the uh, property owners have have taken a priority politically and that's why we're dealing with what we're dealing with at the legislature one of those bills as i understand would make it illegal for us to send a mo letter to a property owner with tall grass and creating a nuisance mm -hmm. so that's how far the pendulum is trying to swing in austin it goes from z you know zero to 80 in two seconds so um you know, I think I think for for our economic development department's benefit, we need to be able to communicate with potential clients the importance of, of what they're bringing to our community, and and explain to them we want it to be a good looking facility and we're you know we incentivize things with tax abatements and things like that. If you got a voluntary tree conservation plan, you could use that as a tool to say this is the model that we would prefer you follow and negotiate from there to end up with a good looking manufacturing facility anywhere we go where there's trees existing. So that's kind of where we're at. So I'll go back, Bruce, did you want to say something else? Okay, I'll go back to what I said the last time we were here because I'm, I'm fine with a voluntary tree ordinance. Um, what I said last time was this, people want their businesses to look appealing. We are an appealing city. Voluntary, in my mind, they want to do business in the city. They want their business to look nice. They're going to plant trees. They're going to look, make it look aesthetically pleasing. We are an aesthetically pleasing city. And people go spend money at aesthetically pleasing buildings. And I am, I'm, if that saves our tree ordinance until such time as the legislature decides what they're going to do, keeps it in place, we make it voluntary, we still have people that want to come in and do business in our city and, and do right by our city and garner some business they're going to do what's right voluntarily they may not spend as much money as they would have but that's not a bad thing you know again cost prohibit prohibitive so i'm fine with a voluntary landscape or, or i'm sorry tree ordinance thank you mr burwell mr so, rodriguez chris um so you said the landscaping is going to the, one of the suggestions that are was to take the landscaping requirements out of the zoning ordinance and put them in our subdivision so that's correct uh, so this is part of the landscaping requirements is tree protection so how how does that change 
once it's in the subdivision ordinance? At that point, it would no longer go to the ZBA for somebody wanted a variance. It would end up before y'all. Okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to understand. So if it's voluntary and if it's, how is it different if it's voluntary and not voluntary under this subdivision ordinance? So what, how does that either Either ordinance, it's voluntary if you adopt this ordinance. It would just be, be positioned different in our code book. It would be in the subdivision chapter instead of the zoning chapter. If it's in the zoning chapter and somebody wants a variance, it goes to the quasi-judicial board of the zoning board of adjustment. Right. And then if they want to appeal that, it goes to the district court. Right. So if it's, if it's in the regular subdivision, then it would go before the planning and zoning commission with a recommendation to the city council instead of going to a district court. So at that point, the, the zoning or the planning and zoning commission can have a say whether, yeah, we, we don't agree. We think you should just keep these number of trees and the rest you can get rid of, or is that no. not what we can or can't no, do? That's not what this ordinance would accomplish. That wouldn't okay. be voluntary. Yeah. Okay. So, um, this, this, you know, the, the charge that I received was repeal the tree ordinance. Uh, by the time we got through going to the, to the, getting it ready to go to the planning and zoning and the work was done on that, we, we decided that maybe a, the voluntary uh, ordinance would be a better resolution for our city. Because you could check the box that you do have a tree preservation plan on the scenic city and you also have something to negotiate with as a pattern or template, whatever you want to do as, as you move forward to incentivize projects or to uh, negotiate uh, how how we want that to look. It's 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 a lot of work. That's well done. You hate to just flush the toilet on it. You know, it just needs to be um, the recommendation from the Planning and Zoning Commission was needs to be voluntary at this point. And they were simply trying to accommodate your request to repeal the ordinance because uh, I think they were completely happy with the way it was. It's just they want to do what you want them to do. And the message was that the council. It had charged me to uh, to repeal that ordinance. Ms. Burwell? Last comment. The other thing is if, if we keep the tree ordinance and, keep, and change it to voluntary, if there's a chance that anybody with a tree ordinance in a scenic city can be grandfathered in at the state level, at least we have that in place instead of just repealing it. Right. Yeah, and I think that was one of the sticking points in uh, January. Yeah. yeah, I, I think the bon yeah after discussion, I think the volunteer with, I think that's awesome, and I don't think I think we can move forward with this without even requesting the staff to do any more work. If if that's a, a that's a motion y'all want to make, I, I think that would be the best way to go. Is that we we still have our tree protection, we still have the tree ordinance, and it's still and it's just being moved from the zoning. To, uh, well, that that action is not tonight. Well, yeah, eventually, eventually it'll be yeah. moved from the zoning. And tonight would be be considering right. adopting ordinance number 23-09, approving the request of the City of Granbury to amend select sections of the City of Granbury zoning ordinance related to tree preservation and conservation. Amendments proposed are to section Article 8, landscape requirements, and Article 13, tree preservation requirements. Mayor. Ms. Burwell. I'll make a motion that we adopt ordinance 2309 as presented. I second motion. that. Mr. Wadley seconds. Ms. Burwell made the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. I think aye 6 and 0. Oh. Uh, All opposed say nay. Mayor, nay. Um, do we still need staff to do anything else? That's coming uh, any of the council no, members. Sort of no, fun throwing not Michael on this agenda. I have no. Okay. I would like to yeah. close that this agenda item out with this report. Uh, we, you know, I, I know of a city that has a landscape ordinance that, you know, if, if you have a pecan or an oak, a particular oak, not any kind of oak, but a particular oak, particular species of oak, um, if you remove it. If it's over 11 inch trunk, you remove it. You got to plant two somewhere else on your property to add up to that 11 inches. <laughs> That's pretty simple. Um, but where you're where you have other cities like where Michael used to be the city manager in West University place uh, very more onerous than what we have but their cities built out they're not any there's not any wooded areas that have to be addressed and and so 
they're really just trying to put more trees in their community with their ordinance. So it all depends on the local situation, the local where you're at in relation to how many trees you have. I mean, if you're in West Texas and you got a tree preservation plan, there's not very many trees you have to preserve, but you know, those that are important get preserved. But uh, so we did look, or I have looked, and I know that Michael's, we talked about it at lunch today, we were going over this agenda item like, we, we need some information because they asked for it, and yet we're waiting on our consultant apparently to provide that for us. But our own research shows that, you know, we're, we're a long way from what, you know, two to one, if you cut it down, and, and that one development over, I won't mention which one, the developer paid over $100,000 to the city tree fund because he got rid of some very large water oaks. They wouldn't have lived another 15 years anyway, but he, he bulldozed them. Now, there were a couple of good live oaks, but they were mostly water oaks, and, and he paid the fee. He said, I don't care. I'm just going to pay the fee, and that's what he did. And so we used that money to plant trees at the police department. It looks great, you know? <laughs> so that's, that's an expensive example. So, um, but here's the thing. If we're trying to develop manufacturing, they're going to go where there's the least amount of resistance to where people are friendly and want to work with them, and there's not some kind of penal code that's going to make them write a check for a half million dollars to the city because they had to, to, had to bulldoze the site to have their 100,000 square foot building for manufacturing. So that's, we need some room in there to be flexible. And I appreciate y'all enduring this agenda item. So I just wanted to give y'all a little history. Thank you. We uh, voted that and, and approved it 6 and 0. Oh, I forgot to ask for nays, but I hear no nays on that. Good. Okay, we're gonna move along to uh, item number eight, citizen comments on moderators not on the agenda. Speakers have a time limit of three minutes. Uh, and the city council will be allowed to receive input or information for future agenda items being not allowed to enter into any discussion and any uh, uh, discussion is held with the mayor so i'm going to call and not with council i'm going to call miss stacy wrist first if you would uh, introduce yourself please My name is Stacy Rist. I am one of the owners of Bennett's Camping Center at 2708 East Highway 377. And um, although I still think the sewer plant is terribly wrong and still will continue to fight that, that is not why I'm here. I'm here to commend the volunteer fire department. Um, on, it was March 9th, we had a fire in our shop at 3 a.m. in the morning and with the, it, it I, I just knew worst case scenario the place was going to burn down and the fire department was there before we got there and we intentionally lived minutes from the fire uh, from uh, from our work and they um, I think they sent more truck way more trucks than necessary it was overkill but thank God it turned out to be that way there were um, it was station 10 station 20 which station 10 is city station 10 station 30 out of crescent station 40 out of dcbe and um i am just so appreciative of them they the response time was amazing the i have a son that's a career firefighter i know they can make a mess the met they made such minimal mess when they were there and i just really want to commend the professionalism they had, the, they had to pull a meter, have it off with UCS, get UCS back out there, and it was less than an hour and a half, and we were back home in bed. Electricity back on, everything. And it just, praise God, it ha caught on fire when it did because we had an employee that comes in that at that time, and she heard it. But unplug your lithium batteries. Do not leave a property with batteries charging. That's what it was, was tool drill mo drill batteries in a toolbox um, caught on fire but I just really want to commend the fire department for their professionalism so thank you very much thank you Ms. Rist I'm, everybody sitting up here is thinking how many drill batteries I have in my garage at this point in time charging, charging. 
Thank you. Thank you again, Ms. Frizz. Ms. Anita Branch. Hello, my name is Anita Branch and I live at 1720 Bentry Court here in Granbury. And a few weeks ago, I attended the infrastructure workshop held by the city, county, and other interested stakeholders. It was interesting to see some of the improvements that were being proposed that will help relieve the overextended infrastructure here in Hood County. I was disappointed, however, to hear both Mayor Jarrett and Mr. Kaufman state that they had no intention of looking at other sewage treatment plant locations and were pushing ahead with the plant on Old Granbury Road in spite of the litigation that is currently ongoing. During that workshop, Mr. Kaufman incorrectly stated that those in opposition to this sewage plant had filed an appeal that was expected to be resolved in 14 months or less. This statement was incorrect, however. Those opposing a sewage plant on Old Granbury Road have, fi have filed for and were granted a motion for reconsideration of the TCEQ's decision. This motion is not an appeal. The appeals process will begin if and only if the court overseeing this motion for reconsideration decides against those of us who will be most impacted by such a sewage plant. There are three levels of appeal which will be pursued if necessary, each of which will take 12 to 18 months to resolve. We are currently three years in to the opposition to a sewage plant on Old Granbury Road, a period of time that is more than adequate to have gone through the application and approval process for a sewage plant at a less injurious location and to have started constructed construction of such a plant. Although the city has publicly placed the blame for hundreds of millions of dollars in delayed development and thousands of lost jobs squarely on the shoulders of those opposing their ill-advised sewage plant, the city needs to man up and accept their own responsibility for these impacts, impacts which will continue to grow as long as the reconsideration and appeals process continues. Again, I respectfully request that the city withdraw their application for a sewage plant on Old Granbury Road and pursue other less impactful alternatives. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Branch. That concludes our agenda, except for the executive session. I now declare that the Granbury City Council is convened into open session. All members are present. The City Council will go into closed session pursuant to provisions of Texas Government Code in accordance with the authority contained in the following sections. 551.087, Deliberation Regarding Economic Development Negotiations, Highway 377 Investments, LLC. 551071, Consultation with Attorney, a Pending or Contemplated Litigation. 551072, Deliberation Regarding Real Property. We will now go into closed session. We are finished with our uh, closed meeting. I now declare that the Granbury City Council reconvenes into open session. There was no action taken in closed session and all council members are present. <clears throat> Is there any? Ms. Burwell. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to authorize the city manager to enter into a development agreement with Highway 377 Investments LLC for alternative wastewater treatment pursuant to the current moratorium ordinance and for the future voluntary annexation of the property owned by 377 Investments as set out in the development agreement. I second that motion. Motion is made by Ms. Burwell, seconded by Mr. Wadley. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. That passes with 6 and 0. Oh. Ms. Burwell, do you have more? I do. I would like to make a motion to authorize the city manager to execute a real estate contract with Linkstar Investment for the sale of certain real, real property owned by the city of Granbury and to execute a development agreement with Linkstar Investments for alternative wastewater treatment pursuant to the current moratorium ordinances. And I'll second. Motion made by Ms. Burwell, seconded by Mr. Vail. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. I hear no nays. It passes 6 and 0. Oh. Ms. Burwell, do you have more? I do not. Does Mr. Corrigan have any? <laughs> okay, I hear no, no more business to be held. We are now closed.
There you go.